if they if they do it at their store in Bowie and they do it at their Nissan store in Rockville, I'm just going to suggest one thing that Attorney General Anthony Brown might want to check every one of their other stores. It's just I'm just suggesting because more than likely <laughs> that same line is printed on every buyer's order in every store they own. Darkar's Honda and owners face civil charges for alleged deceptive sales practices. Folks, yes. I don't want to say we uh, we broke this story first. February 1st of this year, Zach Shevska over on X, formerly known as Twitter, posted this from Darkar's Nissan of Rockville. I want to be very clear. This is not the Honda dealership that's yeah. in the automotive news article. So th this, if I may, this this might show it goes on at all their dealerships, not just their Honda one and Bowie. I'll tag I'll tag the uh, Maryland State Attorneys General on this. This is a first two percent sales commission on the deal worksheet for a new Nissan Altima. Wow! Name another industry as convoluted as the car business, and you can see here two percent sales commission not required by law. Dad, what happened here is the Maryland Attorney General has filed civil charges against Dark Cars Honda, which again, on February 1st, I broke the story from Dark Cars Nissan. We'll see if we can get some attention from Anthony Brown on this as well. But let's read through this, Dad. A Dark Cars Honda dealership in Bowie, Maryland, allegedly engaged in, quote, unfair or deceptive trade practices at nearly every stage, end quote, of new vehicle sales, according to a civil, according to a civil charge filed in July by Maryland Attorney General Anthony Brown. The state attorney's general office, general's office alleges that the dealership, along with the parent company doing business as dark cars, violated Maryland's Consumer Protection Act. The attorney general's statement of charges says dark cars Honda tricked customers by adding a fee equal to 2% of the vehicle's sales price, misleadingly labeling it as an optional sales commission. However, this fee wasn't a commission and customers didn't realize they could refuse to pay it according to the mm -hmm. filing. May I want to say one thing? For a customer to say they didn't realize they could refuse to pay it when right underneath it, it says not required by law, it just means that the customer uh, didn't read what was there because it also says for the $500 processing fee, yep. not required by law. So you can certainly fight the dealer on it. They're still going to charge you the dock fee or the processing fee. But in this case, to label something as a commission, but what do you think when you see 2% commission? Who normally gets the commission? The salesperson. Okay. If they don't give that to the salesperson, then it's not really a commission, is it? Who knows who gets the money? It's also just well, weird well, when you're the, buying a car the, for it to have a line item for commission. Absolutely. It's ridiculous that, you know, it's, it's like on takeout. When I, when I go pick things up, they go, do you want a tip? Why do I want a tip? Uh, I'm not tipping you just because you made the stuff. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tip you're you tipping for the service. Yeah. For, you know, if you're bringing it to me, I'll tip you. If you're bringing it to my table, I'll tip you. If I'm getting my ass in my car and driving to your location and walking in your door and picking up my stuff, you should tip me, okay? You should give me a discount for doing that, okay? You shouldn't ask me if I want to tip you, okay? So it's just, yeah, there's no way that a dealership should be, well, they do expect the customer to pay for the commission through the profit on the vehicle, not a secondary line item on top of the profit in the vehicle. You know, people have heard me say any number of times that, that the car business is littered with some of the most creative people on the face of the planet. And then people have suggested in comments that, you know, basically I use the word creative for crooked. Okay. <laughs> you know, the, these people can think of unbelievable ways in order to grab extra money. Yeah, sure. Put a line item on there that says 2% commission. To who? For what? Why? Um, it, it, and and if, they, if they do it at their store in Bowie, and they do it at their Nissan store in Rockville, I'm just going to suggest one thing that Attorney General Anthony Brown 
might want to check every one of their other stores. It's just I'm just suggesting because more than likely that same line is printed on every buyer's order in every store they own. <sighs> just in my opinion. So and, and this, I gotta this, get that damn shirt. This, I gotta get I gotta get multicolored shirts. Every one of them bad boys has to say, in my opinion. And I'll wear a different one every day, but everybody will know. It's just my opinion. This dealer group, Dad, has threatened to sue Car Edge before. Um, they have re requested that their inventory be removed off of our website. They've been very aggressive with us as we advocate for consumer, you know, to empower consumers. And so, yeah. you know, take that with a grain of salt. There are a handful of dealer groups out there that look at us and what we do at Car Edge and say, you guys are the scum of the earth. You guys are the worst. Just, you know, general awareness there. I will say that Maryland's state attorney general has also, in the article says, the dealership also is accused of illegally financing the sale of add-ons such as, quote, Darkar's Assurance and the, quote, Darkar's Protection Plan. The store allegedly included unwanted equipment and products in the sale and failed to clearly list and itemize everything customers were paying for along with the costs. Darkar's spokesperson said they are prepared to defend our company and our lawful practices in court against these baseless claims. So we shall see what happens there. But we do have another attorney's general, attorney general, taking action against the dealer group. And again, for dealers out there, Car Edge, we are not anti-dealer. We recognize y'all exist. We just want you to be fair, honest, transparent, and pretty much, in our opinion, the opposite of this crap. Okay, that's all we want. All we want from you. All we want, and don't threaten to sue us, please. We're your friend, we're, not your foe. Like, there's no we're, reason we're, to. We're yeah. not asking for much. I mean, we really, it's you know, the, what we ask for is common sense. Okay, we're 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 not saying, gee, you're not entitled to make a profit. We're not saying we want you to go out of business. We're not. We want you to make money, the old-fashioned way. I don't know. The honest way, just if you own a dealership and the way you get people in the door is based on deceptive advertising or the way that you make money once you have people in the door is based on deceptive sales practices, you need to look into the mirror and say to yourself, why am I doing it this way when I could do it? honestly without all that crap now the answer you're going to come up with i know because i've worked for enough owners the answer you're going to come up with is well everybody does it and if i don't do it i won't be able to survive and i'm just here to tell you as nicely as i possibly can that is pure unadulterated bs and you know it okay you've chosen to do it this way you can choose to do it the right way. Use a little common sense. Bring a little common sense to the sales side of things. Bring a little common sense to your advertising. Figure out a way to differentiate yourself from everybody else. And guess what? You'll be able to make a lot of money in the car business. But you, you don't need to do it this way, in my opinion. New Toyota Tacoma is reportedly experiencing transmission problems after less than 1,000 miles. This came out two hours ago over on Jalopnik. The automaker known for making the most reliable cars have been having plenty of reliability issues. Lately, for years, the main reason why folks bought Toyotas is because they're reliable. Well, now we've got after the Tundra engine recalls, which are 100,000 uh, Toyota Tundras that are having their engines replaced, we now have folks... Over at the drive, reporting on transmissions failing on the Tacomas, um, people have been having issues both with the manual and the automatic transmissions. This is not a good look for the trucks at Toyota. Again, Tundra engines, 100,000 of them being rebuilt and replaced in a recall and now bubbling up of Tacoma transmission issues. I, you know, I can understand if it was just the automatic. I don't know. I mean, typically with a manual transmit, I, I you know, I don't. I don't know how you can screw that up. Uh, yeah. Typically, it's user error, not the not the transmission itself. You know that's it, it's certainly unfortunate for Toyota. They've been going through a tough time of it lately. But my guess is there's enough Toyota fanboys and fangirls out there, um, and and they can live off of the goodwill that they've 
they've created over the last 50 years that, uh, you know, they should be able to carry on um, very well uh, into the near future. And let's also acknowledge the fact that Toyota is replacing 100,000 engines. We did the math. It's going to cost them hundreds about a billion, of billions of dollars. About a billion dollars. Yeah. So like kudos to them because there's also other automakers. I'm looking at you, Hyundai and Kia, who their cars <laughs> get stolen and they do nothing. And auto insurers say they can't insure them. And so there's different ways to handle these situations. Toyota definitely does it. Well, it's didn't uh, if I if I remember correctly, didn't Hyundai and Kia um, spend like two hundred two hundred fifty million dollars on a settlement for yep. the stolen cars? Not nearly enough, especially if you can't get insurance companies to insure them anymore. Yep. Um, but yeah, I you know eat to each their own. Some companies react uh, much more consumer friendly than others. That's all. And Toyota exactly seems to be reacting in the consumer friendly manner. Check out these massive discounts on new Maseratis. There's rumblings in the auto industry right now that Maserati is going to find a new home. And holy cow, Maseratis are not selling. You've got dealers advertising the Grey Kale. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, $25,000 off of MSRP. The Maserati Quattroporte, a new one, $40,000 off of MSRP. A Gran Turismo Modena, $43,496. Off of MSRP. So, Still so let enough. me ask. Let me ask you a question: Are those deals good enough to get those vehicles moved? So, so the question becomes: How how big of a discount does it have to be for somebody to say, "Hey, I know in my heart of hearts that Maserati is going to be a giant pain in my ass if I buy it," but at forty four thousand dollars off, I'm I just might be able to put up with that. Two things. The list continues on. And then, you know what we're going to do, Dad? We're going to go yeah. check out the cost of ownership. That's what I was going to say. Let's you should check out the most important information on our website that that we make impossible or virtually impossible for anybody to find. But trust me, folks, it's worth the effort because what you find can help inform what is a good purchase or a bad purchase. Look at that, Dad. The average cost of owning a Maserati Ghibli for five years is 134000 What the hell did the car cost in the first place? I don't know. Let's see. Is there a Ghibli on this list over here? Let's come back Jeez, over to it. My goodness gracious. We've got a Levante for $46,000 off. Yeah, here you go, Dad. You can get a Ghibli right now. Yeah. For $50,000 off of MSRP. So and the again, car was $111,000. $116,000. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, this is hilarious. So maybe if you could buy one at $50,000 off, it, it, it won't seem quite as bad. The, the pre, go look at the depreciation chart because obviously it depreciated before you bought it at the, the <laughs> look and get an F grade. Uh, you bought it at the depreciated price. There I mean, you go. It's going to lose. Yeah. It's going to lose 35% of its value in the first year. And and so they gave that to you up front to encourage you to buy oh, that wild. vehicle that nobody wants. And, and there, there are people who were suggesting that maybe Stellantis will sell um, Maserati and be done with it because, well, nobody's buying them. <laughs>